What's up YouTube, Salvo G here and welcome back to another Deep Purple reaction video. So, this one was pretty requested in the last reaction. Smoke on the water. Before we get to it, and this is by the way, a live performance I believe from Tokyo, Japan. This song, 1973, hard rock heavy metal. Sixth studio album, Machine Head. The Rolling Stones publication ranked Smoke on the Water 434 on its list of 500 greatest songs of all time. And Total Guitar Magazine ranked Smoke on the Water number four on its greatest guitar riffs ever. That is both pretty significant. Number four. Ooh. Let's see, Q Magazine placed Smoke on the Water number 12 in its list of 100 greatest guitar tracks. Okay. Looks like the band members didn't expect it to be a hit, but it reached number four on the Billboard's pop singles chart in the United States. That's interesting, pop singles. Here we go with some accolades, by the way. Like I said before, 426, um, according to Rolling Stones, for greatest songs of all time. VH1 lists it as 37 for the 40 greatest metal songs of all time. 11 for greatest hard rock songs. Yeah, I mean, whoa, this seems... Number 4, Hot 100. Maybe that's what they meant by pop weird that they said pop singles instead of just hot 100 maybe that's what they meant to say uh, oh number two in Canada wow pretty high highly ranked everywhere else as well this seems like the might be the holy grail for deep purple but let me know if I'm wrong this might be their biggest song it seems like but um, yeah let's go ahead and give it a listen you guys I'm expecting nothing short of greatness. All right, make sure my volume is good. Yeah, okay. Turn off the big display. Don't want to have any problems with YouTube. All right, let's give this a listen. All right, thank you. like that.
before we get back into the song. I don't want to ignore the drums here. From the start, they caught my attention. Okay. Guitar. Okay. Lead and bass vocals. Bass guitar. Hammond organ. Okay. Just want to make sure I get the... Um, I'm still trying to learn the, the names of the, the, the band so far. This is only the fourth song I've heard. So it's easier for me to reference what I'm hearing in the moment back to the um, the names here. That way I can, I can make an, a connection for the future. Now that's what I was hearing in the background. The, uh, the organ. Okay. I was going to say I like the, the organ accents in the song. Kind of plays off of the uh, heavy metal very nicely. Nice little bright sounding contrast. Uh, I need to take a breather here. This this is electric. And um, this I think this is the best footage available, obviously. It's super old. So I think this is probably the best known recording of this, I'm assuming. Not that it's bad or anything, but it would be kind of interesting to see if there's any other videos of this performance. I have a good feeling this is probably the only one. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Oh, boy. Here's a funny thing. I mean, this is a this is an odd thing, but I've noticed that when when any guitar player goes to redo a track for Machine Head, they overdo it, and it's not because they're making a mistake or anything like that. It's really because the music is so powerful, the memory of the music is so powerful that you just think you have to turn up louder, or have more distortion, or more power, and we're often shocked when we go back to the original recordings and we say, wow, this is actually quite delicate. You know, for being a drummer, Ian Pace was just, he was my hero, he was my idol. He was one of my first real influences. And uh, I listened to that record over and over. I always thought Made in Japan was interesting because it showed Deep Purple jamming and changing the songs and changing up some of the arrangements and captured them on stage where a lot of people feel that they were absolutely lethal, that they did their best work. And it was just one of those, uh, one of those ultimate live albums of the time. You know, these guys are just in a different league. Deep Purple were better than everybody else. <laughs> two ins <laughs> I've been getting the, the last names mixed up I'm not gonna lie one thing that really um, 
sticks out for me. Not only was the the riff extremely contagious, um, very rememberable. That's I could see that being a um, just a staple in rock and roll history. But the opening here just sets the tone so remarkably. I want to hear it again or leaving the video. <laughs> to be a party <laughs> that was crazy oh man that's gonna be stuck in my head all day yeah right there hear the uh you can hear the organ I really like um, keyboards and organs in this type of music for me because it kind of adds like a little bit of a pop sort of uh, tone or just um, sprinkle of sort of like a pop aspect to the song when you have all these electric sounds and these um percussion sounds hearing the the keyboard and um the organ for me kind of like it to me acts as a contrast to the the hard rock or the heavy or the the metal sound i think it um accents and very well plays off of and um what's the word when you make something better Bricks. I think the um, the ham the uh, the organ and the keyboard lets the uh, the the other sounds around it rise to the occasion, so to speak. But it also gives you a little bit of a different sound at the same time, instead of just the hard rock sound. <clears throat> and that's why keyboard has been some of my uh, my favorite instruments in a lot of these bands, <clears throat> because it kind of. It does stand out on its own in a sense, but it fits in perfectly. And I think that's why it's so special because it's it's not just the hard rock and the uh, or, and or the metal that you are listening to. It's a keyboard as well. And I don't know if that was ever traditional in in hard rock or who made that um sort of a staple but it it almost doesn't sound like it would it would fit into like a hard rock um genre originally you would to me it's just like you would think of drums bass and guitar the keyboard is like the um the odd one out and the fact that it just kind of seamlessly fits in so well with all of these songs and these bands i don't know for me it's just it's just special I might be rambling on a little bit too much here about keyboards, but it just just shows goes to show you like how much I actually enjoy that particular sound, and I can't get over it. And especially in this one, it's so delicate and so it's just not that noticeable to me. Not no, not that noticeable to me for other people, but for me, 
it's actually very noticeable because that is one of the special sounds to me in all of these different songs. That was really, really great. Um, I probably talked too much about it at this point. I just spent three minutes talking about why I like keyboards so much. <laughs> and now we're 17 minutes into the saw into this video. So yeah, I'm going to cut it off there. <laughs> I'm going to apologize in advance for rambling so long. If you've made it this far, though, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed the reaction and my um, rather unnecessary long ramblings there, don't forget to subscribe down below. Leave a like button. Leave a like on the video as well. And I promise most of my videos aren't this long. So I hope you come back for the next one. <laughs> but until then, you guys, I'll see you in the next Deep Purple reaction video. Peace.